Good morning. It's good to come into the house of the Lord to worship Him. What a special day it is. Indeed, today we will be participating in the communion service where we receive the emblems. We serve one another with foot washing preceding the emblems. And following that, not only will we worship together, we'll have the joy of fellowshipping around the table following that for a friendship potluck lunch in our Christian Life Center. We hope that you will be able to stay, that you'll make a new friend, a new acquaintance, and get better connected with each other and with Christ. In just a few days, it's going to be Thanksgiving Turkey Day. Good day for us, not so good for turkeys. couple of quick quick statistics. On that day, 200, or, um, the number of turkeys that were raised in one year, recent year was 242 million. 2.4 billion pounds of sweet potatoes. 1.1 billion is the number of pumpkins that were grown in one year. The largest pumpkin pie the largest. Now, ladies, you make some fantastic pies, but not to this size and scope. 3,699 pounds. Required 187 pounds of pumpkins, 233 dozen eggs, 109 gallons of evaporated milk, 525 pounds of sugar, 700 pounds of sh- 7 pounds of salt, 14.5 pounds of cinnamon, 15 million people. The question that I had is, how did they bake it? It's just one of those uh, phenomena. They must have put a tent over it or something. 15 million people will plan out a dining at restaurants. 14 million will uh, have takeout orders. And 4 million um, who have planned and ordered their entire turkey dinner to be delivered at their house. I don't know what your Thanksgiving plans are like. But this morning, as we gather together, we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? So I'm going to encourage you to take out your bulletins and grab one of the bulletin inserts. There's a white one from the... uh, um, from the wonderful Christmas Boutique. It's white. On the back side of that, it's blank. So I want you to write one, two, and three, at least. You can add more. Want to turn our minds and thoughts to the things that we have reason to be thankful for. So I'm going to give you my top ten, and I'm going to do it in summary fashion. I wrote four different sermons this week, and I set them aside, and God just said, share with Share with them the things that you are thankful for, that they might be able to create a list of things that they are thankful for. So as they sit around that Thanksgiving table, they might take a few moments to share with one another the things that they are thankful for. The first thing that I'm thankful for, the very first thing at the top of my list, is people. People. People are wonderful, th- people are wonderful to have in your life both in the times when things are going well and sometimes where uh, there's a little friction. But people, I'm thankful for my nuclear family, my family of origin, those who are blood relatives, and I'm thankful for my church family because it's through those two sets of family that um, I live, that I make friends. I'm thankful for people, family, friends, Current friends, old friends, mentors, I'm thankful that I have a family and I can call you my friends. How is it? Are you thankful for the same? Think in terms of what you're thankful for, the top two or three. I'm thankful for the hope that we have in Christ. The hope that is displayed in every sunrise as darkness turns to light. 
the beauty of the sky, the hope that we find in the Word of God, the hope that we find in the words from others that God brings in to our lives. I'm thankful for the challenges that come into our life. Are you thankful for challenges? Sometimes they're little challenges that we meet ever so easily, and sometimes they're huge challenges. Challenges that causes us difficulties and complexities, perplexities that come to us, that they're just no, it's like a, a, a puzzle of 5,000 pieces, and you've got to put it all together very quickly. Complexities and challenges that causes us to grow, that causes us to deal with uncertainties at times, that causes us to press closer to Christ. I'm sometimes challenged by the complexities and the challenges of life that cause us to face into the wind. You, you know what I mean by that, that, that statement? Sometimes it's like the tornado comes. You don't have a choice about it. The wind is coming at your face. You'd rather have the wind at your back. But I heard the expression uh, this week, face into the wind. If you want to, when a pilot is taking off, which direction do they place their aircraft? Into the wind, that they might have the lift to soar. Sometimes the challenges and complexities of life cause us to face into the wind, to lead us to new discoveries in life. Fourth thing that I'm thankful for this year is the challenges of loss and pain, because it causes us to remember and reevaluate our priorities and our values. I don't like it. I don't like it, the loss and pain. But it brings me back to reprioritize my life. The fifth thing, very quickly, is I'm thankful for the joys that come into my life because God brings them in in so subtle ways sometimes, sometimes dramatic ways that I go, I wasn't expecting that, God. Thank you very much for that joy that unexpected phone call, that person that I met at just the right intersection of time in my life to be a help to them, that they might be an encouragement to me. That serendipitous joy that comes into life. That's what God gives us. That's what God provides for us in unexpected ways. I think one of the things, the sixth way that I'm thankful for in my life is for simple living. Simple living. We sometimes make our life very complex, don't we? We have to do all of these things. And I'm going, no, we really don't have to. I don't have to have six of those things. I can get by with one. I don't have to make my life so complex. A simpler way of ordering our life. A simple way of living the godly life. Seventh thing that I'm thankful for, sometimes we don't have it so much uh, in our busyness metropolitan areas, the simplicity of simple fresh air. You walk out in the morning and it's cold and brisk and you go, yeah, that'll wake me up. But fresh air, get out and exercise in it. The eighth, eighth thing that I'm I'm very thankful for this Thanksgiving season, is food. I wonder why that would pop on the list. In just a few days, there'll be mountains of mashed potatoes and rivers of gravy, along with um, probably green beans, along with pecan pie, along with pumpkin pie, maybe apple pie, a few, uh, a, a few scoops of ice cream, and uh, there's that turkey, that mock turkey, and uh, all the rolls and things that go together, and you think, if I take just a little bit of each, I'll have a taste, and pretty soon that small plate is full, and you need the sideboards. And when you get done with that, you think, I'm not sure which, which was best. I have to go back, because it didn't balance out. You know what I'm talking about? And food, it, it just tastes so good as the average Thanksgiving dinner contains around 3,500 calories. Plus, it's okay. It's okay. It's Thanksgiving Day. 
the one of the last things, the ninth thing I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for you and your stories that you share with me about your life, about your Christian journey, about the love that you have for Christ and for one another. For it's through our stories that we share that we find strength and courage to carry on. And probably the first thing, winding down my top ten, would be I'm thankful for Jesus, our Savior, our friend, our Lord, our rock. How are things in your life during this season of year? Does it cause you to think about what you are thankful for? I would challenge you before you partake, before you have grace and partake of those mashed potatoes and that turkey, to share around the table the things that you are thankful for. But our message today is thanksgiving, isn't it? For you see, you have a lot of things to be thankful for. But thanks is not enough, unless it leads to what? Well, that wasn't enough lead-in. Thanks what? Giving. So as we think about the things we have thanks for, it does lead to giving. For where there is no giving, there's very little thanks. Thanks leads to giving. And without giving, there's very little acknowledgement of that thanks. So I challenge myself today and I challenge you that during this season that your thanks might lead to giving and I challenge myself to giving more. More is such a little word, isn't it? It's not a huge word, it's just a little word. We're giving but stretching and expanding and giving more that you might partake in the joy of giving. Give joyfully. Give joyfully. Give generously. Give with gusto. And finally, give like Jesus gives. And then I believe we'll experience the fullness of thanksgiving. Do you believe that, friends? So, it's during this thanksgiving let us rejoice in the thankfulness that God has bestowed these wonderful gifts upon us and let us joyfully return to him. We're going to celebrate communion on this Sabbath. And in just a moment, we're going to uh, serve each other as the disciples, uh, as Christ served his disciples that last uh, prior to the Last Supper that he had with them. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists practice an open communion. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, come, share with us. You may want to observe, you may want to participate, as uh, we call it the uh, emblem of the ordinance of humility in, in a symbolic way of serving each other, of the washing of the feet. The rooms are listed uh, in your bulletin. We'll separate at this time. We'll reconvene in just a few moments um, to regather in the sanctuary for the uh, bread and the wine in just a few moments. We'd invite you to join us or you might choose to remain here quietly in prayer and meditation and we'll be back together just momentarily. May God bless us as we partake a bit, tar, par, as we partake and serve each other, not partake of each other, but as we serve each other, and we reconvene in just a few moments.